throughout this year, it's been really clear that uh, all of you really seem to enjoy watching me install Linux on things. Of course, 2025, my highest performing videos have all been installing Linux on X in some way or another, at least nearly all of them. But there's one machine that I've never installed Linux on, and so today we're going to change that. Today, we're seeing if Linux can replace my Windows 11 gaming PC. So yes, at the moment, I must confess, I have Windows 11 installed on my gaming PC. This was a build that we did actually on the channel uh, a while ago now, and I still use it as my gaming PC. It, it is literally just for gaming, and because of that, I still find myself using Windows, and specifically Windows 11 at the moment. Not that I like it, but it just seems to be the most reliable. I don't get a whole lot of time to game, so I want to be able to just turn on my computer and play some games. Okay, granted, normally actually the flow is I turn on my computer and spend 20 minutes updating said games and then play them. But still, I just want them to work. And unfortunately, that's always meant Windows for me. So I want to see if we can change that today. Now, don't get me wrong. I love Linux. I love gaming on Linux. I have a Steam Deck and I probably use my Steam Deck more than I use my gaming PC. But that's the problem. I don't use the gaming PC that much. So when I do use it, again, I just want it to work. The other issue I have is that my gaming PC has an NVIDIA graphics card in it. It has an RTX 4060, which is a great gaming graphics card, but historically and still to this day, NVIDIA drivers on Linux are kind of sucky. AMD is by far better, and in fact, I would go as far as to say Intel GPUs are better than NVIDIA GPUs when it comes to driver support. So I've always felt kind of left behind and it's just never worked well enough for me. So today we're going to see if any of that has changed. And to be clear, the build has not changed since I made it a while ago on the channel. It still has a Ryzen 4600G, which isn't necessarily the best G CPU to be using. Um, it's just what I had. Uh, 32 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM and that RTX 4060 along with an M.2 storage drive and all that sort of fun stuff. So it is by no means a amazing machine, but under Windows, it's pretty serviceable. I would say it does 1440p gaming pretty well, and it does HD 1080p gaming very well. Uh, and in fact, some, on some lighter games, you can even kind of push it to 4K, but I use a, a 1440p monitor, so I never really need to do that anyway. All right, so let's get on with it. And I should probably mention that uh, we're going to be using Bazai as our Linux distribution of choice, considering it's supposed to be a one-stop shop for gaming and quite closely representing SteamOS and all that sort of fun stuff. It makes the most sense for this use case where it is literally just being used for gaming. I don't do anything else on this computer. So I've already done a little bit of benchmarking under a Windows 11 with kind of the five games that I use I guess the most regularly, and I definitely want to work well. Those are Doom Eternal, which still I absolutely love. I really want to check out the new Doom, but I haven't got that far yet. Cyberpunk 2077, which again is a game I absolutely love. Fallout 76, which while does get a lot of hate, I actually personally quite enjoy it. No Man's Sky, which is another game that I do really enjoy getting sucked into and spending hours just flying around procedural generated worlds and all that sort of fun stuff. And then Black Mesa, which is a game that I find kind of in the past has really struggled under Linux. So I'm interested to see how it performs today. So Bazite does actually offer a download with the NVIDIA graphics pre-installed. But even on the website, there's a couple of known issues, specifically around graphics glitches. You have to go into the Steam UI once everything's installed, apparently, and enable GPU acceleration. And it will also apparently struggle with 4K resolutions on monitors. So We'll check those out. The actual install process was pretty straightforward as always. Now, because I'm using my capture card to record this, it's a 4K capture card. So the machine sees it as a 4K monitor. And I will say that the UI just scales terribly here or rather doesn't scale at all. So yeah, if you are installing this using an actual 4K monitor, you're probably gonna have a little bit of a rough time or have to sit very close to the screen. I hope that maybe in the future they work out some dynamic scaling here because, yeah, it's a little bit of a pain with such a tiny UI. But nonetheless, the usual kind of 
non-linear install process that they have where you just click through and set everything up yourself and don't go step by step. Uh, all seemed to work fine and we got an install. But yes, straight away, we did in fact get those graphic graphics glitches, uh, which as I mentioned, it's gonna be down to the 4K capture card. Uh, I was hoping that maybe once we'd enabled that GPU acceleration, those glitches would go away, but that wasn't the case. So just to test this, I did switch over to running of the machine directly through a monitor, back through my normal 1440p monitor, and yeah, no issues here at all, no graphics glitches. So what they say on the website is correct, and if you have an NVIDIA graphics card, chances are you're not gonna have a good time if you've got a 4K screen it's gonna be a bit of a mess. And that's a shame because obviously if one of the reasons why you might wanna do this is to put this computer in your living room and have it connected up to your nice big 4K TV. So it's a shame that that isn't the case here. And it's again, kind of already a point to not using an Nvidia graphics card on a Linux gaming machine. Dialing things back down and using 1440p, everything is working as we'd expect. Um, I did find that I couldn't get the uh, the right hand side menu that to come up that you'd normally have, especially under on the Steam Deck, and kind of is supposed to be part of Bazite. Uh, I couldn't get that up to then enable the performance overlay, so I had to do the usual thing of adding Mango HUD as a parameter when launching the game, so that it would lo look at, uh, launch up, which is a shame. Again, it's a bit weird. It's not quite the smoothest experience I'd hoped, but. It's not a game breaker. So obviously the most important thing here is actually doing some gaming. And uh, under, I wanted to kind of stress test this a little bit to see if I could eke more performance out of Linux. I, I guess when I'd sort of set this up, I kind of just assumed that performance was gonna be as good on Linux at least, if not better. So I was really aiming to try and see if Linux could do better than Windows. Um, I was kind of wrong, at least under some games. So I fi fired up Doom Eternal um, Ultra Nightmare settings at 1440p, and under Windows 11, we get about 30, 35 FPS. It's nothing amazing, but this really is pushing the system to its limit, like I say. It really does prefer that 1080p gaming. Running it up under Linux, I was really hoping we'd get a little bit of a better performance here, but actually, it was way worse. Uh, it was about 17 FPS, it was really slow, really choppy. It was not a good experience at all. Um, and I would consider this one definitely a win for Windows. So next up, we did take a look at Cyberpunk 2077, and that is running at high settings with no ray tracing and no frame generation. Again, at 1440p. Under Windows 11, we get around 40 FPS. Again, this is a game that does really benefit from that frame generation, so you can probably get it to perform a bit better, but this is without any of that magic enabled. Under Linux, I was pleasantly surprised. We did actually see a performance boost here. We were getting 60 plus FPS and it was way, way smoother. This is a game that was definitely playing better under Linux compared to Windows. So that's a win for Linux. Next up, I wanted to take a look at Fallout 76. Like I mentioned, it's a game that I play quite often. And for this one, I cranked up the settings all the way up. And again, 1440p. And on Windows 11, we were hitting around 70 FPS, I would say, maybe peaking at 80. Nothing super amazing, but again, to be expected. Um, this is kind of a, the region of the that I expect. This game's quite laggy and uh, problematic anyway, so you're not going to benefit from many more frames per second than that, I would say. Just want to stop in to say we are very near the end of the year now. I did have the goal of 10,000 subscribers by the end of the year, but we're at about 7.4k at the time of recording. So if you are enjoying this video, please do hit that like button and subscribe because every subscription really does count and we can see how close we can get to that 10k goal. Thank you very much and on with the video. Under Linux, it looks like we hit into a sort of frame capping issue here. It seemed very much like it was locked to 60 FPS. Didn't really go over that at all, but the CPU and GPU weren't being taxed that much. So I dare say if there's a way to unlock the frames, we were actually probably performing better here. I think if we look at the loads on the system, it seems like the Linux system is, is less loaded, but you know, is less under strain, but I wouldn't necessarily kind of count that for much. So I'm gonna mark this one down as kind of undecided. Uh, I don't think either sides win here. Linux might win, but that frame locking is a little annoying, uh, especially kind of 
out of the box. I'm sure you can hack it to not do that. Next up, we have No Man's Sky. And again, maxed out the settings, 1440p. And on Windows 11, it really did struggle. This is quite a heavy game. It has a lot of visual effects when you max out the settings and don't disable some of those effects. So it was hitting about 20 FPS and it wasn't very playable at all. Again, these are not the settings I would normally play at, but I wanted to really try and make it sweat. Linux seemed to perform marginally better here. I think in some moments we were hitting up to like 40 FPS. So if we were basing this purely on frames per second, Linux would win. However, there was a lot of stutters, a lot of times where that really like locked up and properly froze. So to be honest, I actually probably have to give this to Windows. Uh, it was a more smooth 20 FPS compared to the Linux's 20 to 40 to who knows what. And then finally, Black Mesa. Now on Windows 11 Ultra, all the way up, 1440p, we were getting about 140 frames per second. It was silky smooth, really easy. This isn't a hugely taxing game. So, you know, being able to run at those high resolutions, it really looks very nice and it works well. Under Linux, now normally with this game, I have a lot of graphics bugs and issues, shaders not working right, shadows looking weird, all that sort of stuff. But here, actually, it seemed pretty stable. It seemed like it was doing a pretty good job, but it also seemed like it was suffering from some sort of 60 FPS lock. Uh, we weren't going above that at all. And again, neither the GPU or the CPU was being particularly taxed. So again, this is a situation where actually Linux might have won out, but because of that frame locking, Windows has to take it. You know, they're both very sp smooth experiences, but I can't really properly compare them. So that was just kind of a brief look at a couple of games that I play and running Bazite on the NVIDIA GPU. And I think the case is it's just not stable. It doesn't give you enough of a performance win on this kind of hardware that, to make it worth doing. And frankly, I think you probably would actually get a better experience from Linux if you took the time to install something like Ubuntu, get the right graphics drivers and get everything set up just right. I think you will have a better experience that way, uh, which is a shame because again, I wanted something that I could just install and forget about it. So for me personally, I am gonna go back to Windows now for my gaming PC. And that's kind of the only place I still use Windows. I really hope that we can get to a place where Linux does support NVIDIA graphics cards better, but that's really down to NVIDIA. Uh, so my real advice is, if you have an NVIDIA graphics card, you're probably gonna wanna stick to Windows. If you already have an AMD card or you're building a new system, I would definitely look towards AMD if Linux is something that you are at all interested in. It is much better supported, and I think you're gonna have a much better time that way. I know that definitely the next time I come to building a gaming PC, I will probably use an AMD graphics card because I don't really want to use Windows. I don't like Windows. I would prefer to be using Linux, but I'm not gonna do that at the sacrifice of performance and stability, uh, which I'm currently facing with Linux and my NVIDIA graphics card. So I hope this video has been interesting. I hope you've enjoyed kind of a quick look into installing Linux on the last machine that I haven't installed it on. And uh, we can now tick that off even if it's not gonna be a permanent thing. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you again for another video very, very soon. Bye for now.